Azula, Princess of the Fire Nation, might be one of the most fascinating characters in the Last Airbender series. Many of you have asked me to explain Azula, and because it's such an interesting topic, I decided to double down and make a video about her life. This video will not only cover the original show, but I'm going to gather information about her from all over, before, during, and after the series, and I'm going to bring it all together into one video. Now let's get this video started, as I explain the entire life of Azula so far. Azula was the second born to Prince Ozai and Princess Ursa, her older brother Zuko being the first. She was named after her grandfather, Fire Lord Azulon, who was the Fire Lord when she was born and during her early childhood. She was a prodigy firebender, and at one point, she had mastered 14 more forms of firebending than her older brother Zuko. She attended the Royal Fire Academy for Girls, where she met her two best friends, Mei and Tai Lee. Azula became the leader of their little group, and Azula bossing the other two around became the thing that defined their friendship. Azula and her family had a tradition to go to Ember Island where they had a beach house. There they would see their mother's favorite play, Love Amongst Dragons, something that both she and Zuko enjoyed, one of the few things that they agreed on. Her mother Ursa quickly realized that something was seriously wrong with her daughter. She had no remorse and no sense of right and wrong. She did things like burn flowers on the palace grounds, burn a doll sent to her as a present from her uncle, and was a master manipulator and bully. One day, she set her firebending teacher's pants on fire when he told her that she wasn't doing the forms right. While her mother Ursa saw all of this as bad, her father Ozai saw it as good, and she quickly became his favorite. He began to raise Azula as his heir, rather than his oldest, Zuko. Azula not only impressed her father, but her grandfather whom she was named after as well. Even though Azula had the approval from her father, she never got that from her mother. She always thought that her mother favored Zuko and never took her side. This made her desperate for her mother's attention, which might be one of the reasons why she lashed out so much in front of her mother. She was jealous of the attention that Zuko got from her and resentful towards both of them because of this. One night, when the family was having dinner, Ozai told Zuko off, saying that Azula was born lucky and that Zuko was lucky to be born. Azula was happy to see her father stand up for her, but when Ursa shot back at Ozai and stood up for Zuko, Go. Her father's praise wasn't enough to fill the desire of her mother's praise. Azula had a tendency for malice and perfection, and these traits came out a great deal when she was with her friends, Mei and Tai Lee. One day, Tai Lee did a cartwheel after Azula had just failed, trying to do the same. She shoved Tai Lee to the ground out of jealousy and laughed while she did so. That same day, when she saw Mei attempting to hide her crush on Azula's brother, Zuko, Azula used her manipulation to convince her mother to make Zuko play with them. During their game, she placed an apple on Mei's head and set it on fire. This forced Zuko to tackle Mei into a fountain to put out the fire. Azula laughed, finding great pleasure in embarrassing both of them. She encouraged her friends to do bad things. One day, when Azula and Tai Lee had a sleepover at Mei's house, Azula convinced them to steal mochi from Mei's mother, which was a present meant for Mei's grandmother. Azula ended up eating it all because Tai Lee got bad energy from it, and although she didn't say it out loud, Mei didn't want to eat it because she was scared of the Kaje, ancient spirits that her parents told her would snatch her if she did anything wrong. In her sleep, Mei tossed and turned and said that the Kaje were going to get her. This kept Azula up all night. Azula was also very competitive with her friends, so much so that she went to new lengths to win at things as simple as hide and seek. She would use tunnels and secret passageways that she found while exploring and use them to win, something that Tai Lee and Mei grew very tired of. One day, Azula's father, Ozai, asked Azula's grandfather, Fire Lord Azulon, if he could become Fire Lord rather than his older brother, Iroh. Azula listened as her grandfather became furious with her father. He said that Iroh had just lost a son, and as punishment for asking for the throne, Ozai was to lose his son as well. Azula went to tell Zuko this, laughing as she did so, but she was interrupted by their mother. Ursa dragged Azula out of the room and asked Azula what she heard, and Azula told her everything. Azula acted as though she was upset about the whole situation, but as she walked away, she was smiling evilly. This would be the last time she saw her mother for many years, as her mother mysteriously vanished after that night. The last thing that she said to her mother was full of manipulation and lies, the things that she was best at. This was not the last time Ursa saw Azula, however. Ursa went into Azula's room while she was sleeping and kissed her on the cheek saying goodbye. Had Azula known this, things might have turned out differently. Azula was very unaffected by both the death of her grandfather and her mother disappearing in one night. She did, however, enjoy telling Zuko, and Zuko told her that she was sick. 
When Zuko tried to get his knife back from Azula, she rubbed their mother disappearing in his face even more, saying that mom wasn't there to help him this time. When Ozai was crowned Fire Lord, Azula watched gleefully with a big smile on her face. After her mother's disappearance, Ozai began to favor Azula more and more over Zuko. This became most clear when Azula watched, smiling and rooting her father on, as he burned Zuko's face, giving him a permanent scar. He then banished Zuko from the Fire Nation until he captured the Avatar. With Zuko being gone, this officially made Azula become Ozai's heir to the throne. Azula continued her firebending training and became so good that she could produce blue fire along with lightning. Azula got her first official task from her father when he sent her to find and capture Zuko and her uncle Iroh, saying that they were traitors. She found both of them and lied to Zuko, saying that he would be welcomed home with open arms. Right before they were about to leave, one of the guards called them prisoners and the two got away, forcing Azula off the boat and into the water. After failing on her first attempt to get them, she enlisted the help of her childhood friends, Mei and Tai Lee. While in Omashu, Azula seized the city in the name of her father, naming it the City of New Ozai, and she stripped Mei's father, Ukano, from his governor rank. While she was there, she ran into the Avatar, and she told her friends that Zuko and Iroh weren't the only targets anymore. Now, they had to capture the Avatar as well. On her mission, Azula utilized Fire Nation technology such as the tank train while in pursuit of her targets. She came face to face with all three of her targets at one point, but realized that she was outnumbered and blasted her uncle with blue fire to get away. Azula tried to get through the impenetrable walls of Ba Sing Se using a giant Fire Nation drill. She was almost successful, but was stopped by Team Avatar. Azula, along with Mei and Tai Lee, eventually ran into the Kyoshi Warriors. A fight broke out in which the Kyoshi Warriors lost, and Azula Azula, Mei, and Tai Lee took their armor. They used that armor to go to Ba Sing Se, and rather than infiltrate it from the outside, Azula decided to infiltrate it from the inside. She fooled the Earth King to make him think that they were real Kyoshi warriors. The Earth Kingdom traitor and former minister, Long Fang, recognized Azula as the Fire Nation princess, however. He had his Dai Li agents bring her down to a cell to make a deal. The two worked well together, conquering Ba Sing Se, but eventually, Azula betrayed Long Fang and took control of his Dai Li agents. Long Fang ended up bowing down to her and said that she had beaten him at his own game. While Azula was in disguise of the Kyoshi Warrior, she learned of a plot to attack the Fire Nation. When the solar eclipse came, it would cover up the sun, making the firebenders lose their power. It was at that time that Team Avatar and an army behind them planned to infiltrate the Fire Nation. Azula was again faced with all three of her targets, Zuko, Iroh, and the Avatar, but this time she played her cards differently. She promised Zuko that he could come home to the Fire Nation as Crown Prince, and with his help, she was able to capture Iroh and strike the Avatar with what looked like a killing blow. However, Azula was doubtful that she had actually killed him, and because of this, she gave credit to Zuko when they returned home to their father. Zuko didn't want to leave at first, he had to be persuaded. To do this, Azula, with the help of Tai Lee, set up a date for Mei and Zuko. She hoped that his feelings for Mei would persuade him to come home. Before she left Ba Sing Se, Azula made Ju Di in charge and dubbed her as bureaucratic administrator. Azula thought that she was the perfect person for the job. When they returned, both Azula and her brother were welcomed back as war heroes. One weekend, Azula along with Mei, Tai Lee, and Zuko all went to Ember Island to the beach house where their family went every summer when they were little. While there, Azula took advantage of no one knowing who she was. This way, she could experience life as a normal 14-year-old. Her competitiveness came out during a game of volleyball, and everyone thought that she was crazy and annoying. Later on, she made a guy rush away from her when she was too overbearing after they kissed. She again became jealous of Tai Lee, who got all of the attention from the boys. She later laughed when Zuko called Tai Lee a circus freak, seeking out Tai Lee's pain because she was jealous that she was better than her at something. Azula later opened up about how their mother liked Zuko better and said that she didn't care. But after she said this, she paused and looked into the fire with a very hurt look on her face. She then began to dig deeper and said with definite sadness in her voice, My own mother thought I was a monster. When they returned to the Fire Nation, Azula spoke up in a War Council meeting. She and her father came up with the idea to use Sozin's Comet, which would give Firebenders immense power to destroy the Earth Kingdom once and for all. She also warned them about the Solar Eclipse attack, which helped them prepare for it. They planned for Ozai to not be there when the attack occurred, ruining Team Avatar's whole plan. During the Eclipse invasion, Azula stalled Team Avatar, allowing for the very short Eclipse to pass. When it passed and she got her firebending back, she drove them off and allowed the Fire Nation a victory. When Azula went to the prison, the Boiling Rock, her longtime friends, Mei and Tai Lee, turned on her. 
Tai Li Chi blocked Azula, making her fall to the ground, completely helpless and unable to move. She told them that they should have feared her more. She then told the guards to take them somewhere where she would never have to see their faces again and said to let them rot. This is what made Azula start to become unhinged and she became a little bit mental. Azula later confronted Zuko, who had changed sides, in the Western Air Temple. The two began to fight and were both knocked off the airship. Zuko was caught by Appa, but Zuko watched and it looked like the end for Azula, but she caught herself by launching herself with fire and grabbing onto a cliff. She watched as they flew away, knowing that the battle wasn't over. Ozai made Azula's successor as Fire Lord, while he set into motion his plan to become supreme ruler of all nations and the world. This made her mental health go downhill even more. She had a full mental breakdown. She banished her servants, Imperial Firebenders, and all of her Dai Li agents, paranoid that she couldn't trust them and that they would turn on her just like Mei and Tai Li did. She then became paranoid that her father didn't think she could handle being Fire Lord, and she said that she would become the greatest leader in Fire Nation history. While getting ready for her coronation, Azula cut off her hair, and then she had a schizophrenic episode, seeing her mother, who told her it was a shame because her hair was so beautiful. She began to have a conversation with her mother that she was envisioning, telling her that she knew what she really thought of her, that she was a monster. Her mother pointed out to her that all of her life, she used fear to control people. Azula responded, saying that trust was for fools and fear was the only reliable way. She then said in a sad and uncharacteristically unconfident way that even she, her mother, feared her. Her mother told her that that wasn't true and said that she loved her. Azula, consumed by emotion and the past, desperate for her mother's approval, began to cry. That was all that she wanted to hear. But this was too much. She wanted these emotions to go away. She picked up her brush and threw it at the mirror where she was envisioning her mother's reflection. At her coronation, Zuko showed up before she was crowned Fire Lord. Azula then challenged her brother to an Agni Kai, a fight for the throne. Zuko knew that he could beat her because something was off about her. She was slipping. When Azula was losing, she decided to shoot Katara with lightning instead of Zuko, and Zuko jumped in front of it, saving Katara. Azula, more crazy than ever, then began to fight Katara. She was eventually beaten by Katara, and she went full psycho, screaming and spitting out blue fire from her mouth. She writhed on the floor. Her screams slowly started to transition into desperate and pathetic cries. She had lost everything, including her mind. Azula was taken to an insane asylum where she was watched 24-7 to make sure she didn't escape or do anything bad. She continued to have schizophrenic episodes, imagining her mother, which continued to drive her further into insanity. She started to think back to all that had happened to her, and she came to the crazy conclusion that her mother had gotten to her friends, Zuko, and everyone else that played a part in her downfall. Around one to two years later, Zuko went to the asylum to ask Azula for help to figure out the truth about what happened to their mother. Azula agreed, and as she did so, she saw her mother in the mirror next to her. She told Zuko that not a day had gone by since he put her in there that she hadn't wondered what happened to their mother. The first thing Zuko had Azula do was visit Ozai in prison. During this, she was guarded by the Kyoshi warriors, including her ex-friend, Tai Li. Azula and Ozai sat in silence, not even saying so much as hi. When Zuko brought in tea, Azula bit the tray, tore it out of Zuko's hands, and knocked Zuko over, which made their father smile. Azula angrily asked Zuko how he expected her to drink tea while she was in a straitjacket. Tai Li then jumped in and she blocked Azula. Azula screamed and asked Tai Li how she made her lose her fear of her. The she that Azula was referencing was her schizophrenic thoughts of her mother. Azula asked Zuko to let her and Ozai talk in private, and Zuko agreed. After Tai Li and Zuko left, Tai Li told Zuko that Azula was wrong. She never lost her fear of her. While in private, Ozai told Azula about one of his secret chambers in the palace and a bunch of letters that her mother Ursa wrote. He told her that he had collected them and made sure that they weren't sent to whom they were addressed. After Azula and Ozai finished talking, Zuko took Azula alone and asked her what they talked about. Before he could find out, however, Azula blasted him with lightning and got out of her straitjacket. She ran to the chamber that Ozai had told her about, and when Zuko got there, she told him that those letters were the key to finding their mother. When Zuko took a step forward, she burned all of the letters. When Zuko asked what was wrong with her, she screamed, Why don't you ask her that? Again talking about her mother, who she was convinced was out to get her. Azula joined Zuko and Team Avatar on a mission to find their mother. Azula made a deal with Zuko. Because she knew what the letters said, Zuko had to take her unbound and of her own free will. Otherwise, she wouldn't tell him what the letters said. She neglected to tell Zuko one thing, however. She kept one letter, which said that Ozai wasn't Zuko's father. This was her key to taking the throne, as it was not Zuko's birthright if that was true. 
While flying on Appa, Azula asked the group which of them she approached first. She then belted out that none of them had even met her yet, so how did she convince them to help ruin her life? Azula later jumped off of Appa and tried to get away so that she could find her mother on her own. As Azula was running from Zuko, she saw her mother in the reflection of the water. She began to scream at the reflection. She told her mother that she couldn't break her and that she was stronger than she realized. She screamed out, You've been conspiring to take me down from the day I was born. Even when I was an infant, you saw in me something you never had. Power. That's why you think I'm a monster. My power makes you fear me. The reflection of her mother that she was imagining told her that she loved her, and Azula screamed out, consumed by anger, confusion, and her mental illness. She then turned around and hit the water with her bending as she told her mother that this was her most treacherous act, turning her own mind against her. Zuko then approached and asked who she was talking to. Before Zuko could get the answer, however, Katara wrapped Azula in ice. All of them were then attacked by a spirit wolf, and none of them could fight it off. Zuko freed Azula, and she used her immense power to drive the spirit off single-handedly. While Azula was asleep, she was again woken by her schizophrenic thoughts of her mother. This time, her mother told her to give up her quest. Her mother then told her that all her life, she hid behind a mask of intimidation and fear. Azula began to blast her mother, but before she did so, she started questioning everything. Katara stepped in and snapped her out of her schizophrenic state. When Azula realized that the letter she had saved was gone, she confronted Zuko again, who had taken it. The two fought, and Azuko eventually beat her and screamed out, From the day you were born, you've put me through so much. Why, Azula? Why did a relationship have to be like this? She asked Zuko if she was whispering in his ear, telling him to say this, and Zuko told her that she was making no sense. Later on, after everyone had calmed down, Azula and Zuko watched Love Amongst Dragons, which made the two bond as they remembered their childhood on Ember Island. While there, they were invited to a family's home by a man named Aikum. There, they met his wife, Noriko, and their daughter, Kiyi. Later, Azula, Zuko, and Team Avatar went into Forgetful Valley, and Team Avatar began to help a brother and sister in need. Azula then thought that her mother orchestrated this whole meeting with the siblings, and she tried to go after them. Zuko and Team Avatar stopped her, but during their fight, the mother of faces appeared. She told them that she could grant one wish, and before the siblings, who had waited many years to have this wish, Azula stepped in and stole it, asking the mother of faces where her mother was. The mother of faces told her that their mother was now disguised as Nor Rico, the woman part of the family that they had just met. Azula went after her immediately, slipping away from the group. When she got to the house, she zapped her way through the ceiling, kicked Zuko out of the way, and jumped toward her mother. Azula was ready to give the final killing blow, but Noriko, who had her memory erased of her life in the Fire Nation, caressed her face and told her that she was sorry that she didn't love her enough. Tears began to fill in Azula's eyes. All she wanted her whole life was her mother's love and approval. Azula had frozen, and in that hesitation, Zuko jumped in between the two. Azula shot lightning at Zuko, and he absorbed it and shot it back. She told Zuko that she wanted to get rid of her so she could stop seeing her mother in her head. Zuko then told her no, and said that no matter what, she still had him, that she would always be his sister. Azula told him to shut up, and she escaped the house. Zuko and Noriko ran after her, Zuko telling her that he could help her. Azula turned around and told Zuko that even when he's strong, he's weak. She then ran off into the cliffs in the far distance. Zuko searched Forgetful Valley for weeks, but he eventually came to the conclusion that she didn't want to be found. Azula was in exile for quite some time. During that time, she realized what her true destiny was. It was not to be on the throne, and it wasn't to make her father become Fire Lord again either. Her destiny was to turn Zuko into what she and Ozai represented. She wanted to make him ruthless. After figuring out her destiny, two things followed. The voices in her head stopped, and she regained her strength. She was no longer weak or slipping, the way she had been since the finale of the original series. She came up with a plan, and broke out a bunch of girls from the asylum that she was in before. She used the old memory of when she, Mei, and Tai Li stole Mei's mother's mochi. She remembered Mei saying that the Kamarakage were going to get her in her sleep. Azula later found out that the Kamarakage were ancient spirits that abducted children. Azula and her asylum friends that she had broken out dressed up as these spirits, which was part of Azula's larger plan to make Zuko like her and Ozai. They first went to Skeru Kano, Mei's father and the leader of the new Ozai society, a group that wanted Zuko out of the throne and Ozai back in it. She told him, dressed as the Kamarakage, that if he did not get rid of Zuko, then he would suffer. Ukano failed, which Azula predicted and wanted. 
it was just the first step of her plan to turn Zuko into her and Ozai. When Azula came back, Ukano begged her for another month to get the job done. When he failed after a month, Azula showed Ukano her true identity and showed him that she and her friends weren't spirits. In a way, this was even scarier to Okano. He had dealt with her before when she stripped him of his governor rank and took over Omashu, the city that he was governing. When she revealed her true identity, she forced him to help her with the next step of her plan, which was to start kidnapping children, just as the original Kamurakage spirits had done before. She forced him to drain his bank account to make a headquarters where they would keep the kids. The first child that she and her asylum friends kidnapped was Ukano's son, Tom Tom. They kidnapped many more kids and used smoke and secret passageways for quick escapes that made it look like they magically disappeared. Azula, of course, knew of all of these due to her years of exploring in her youth and were the same tunnels that she used while playing hide and seek with Mei and Tai Lee. One night, Azula kidnapped her half-sister Kiyi, the daughter of Ursa, during her life as Noriko. During this kidnapping, she was stopped and cornered and was forced to shoot lightning to escape, which revealed her identity to Zuko, Tai Lee, Aang, and Suki. Azula continued to play with Ukano, eventually revealing that she never intended for Ozai to end up on the throne as Ukano had been promised. She ordered him to start a riot, which made Zuko look even worse to the Fire Nation. Again, all part of Azula's plan to make Zuko look more ruthless. After this, Ukano begged her to release the kids and his son Tom Tom, and right as she was putting the key in to unlock it, she stopped and told him that she was keeping the kids longer. When Zuko, Mei, Aang, and Mei's boyfriend, Kilo, found where the kids were, a fight between them and the asylum girls ensued. Azula eventually got her hands on Kilo, and Mei begged Azula to leave him out of it. When Zuko stepped in, both he and Azula gave each other everything that they had, a battle that would have rivaled the acne Kai they had at the end of the original series. Azula then fled led, and Zuko chased after her. The two once again fought it out, until Azula got the upper hand and was on top of Zuko. To Zuko's surprise, she got off and explained her plan to her brother. She pointed out that in the last few weeks, he had become ruthless and like her and Ozai. When Zuko told her that she was wrong, she vanished using smoke and left him with the parting words, accept it, it's who you are. Zuko gave a speech saying that he was not the best ruler in the past few weeks, and Azula and her asylum friends, dressed as the Kamurokage, watched from a far off rooftop. Azula said his speech was touching and a sarcastic voice, and they vanished. We'll have to wait and see what Azula's next move is. It seems as though she hasn't given up on what she thinks her destiny is, making Zuko like her and Ozai. She and her asylum friends may have been stopped this time, but I think there's a lot more to this story. When we find out more, I'll be sure to make a video about it, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching guys. You can follow me on social media. Links for that will be down below. If you like this video, make sure you press that subscribe button to help grow the channel. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, check out my Patreon. Again, thank you so much for watching and look out for more great videos on the way.